table with different representatives from different distributions. And now I'll leave you with Andrea Stiela. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, originally, uh, Mako um, tried to organize this round table, but because he's not here and I, I feel somehow obliged to this round table, I tried to take over this role and I hope I can manage it as he would have done it, probably. I want to like to introduce the uh, members of this round table. You see Martin F. Kraft, he will speak for vcspkg.org. We had a talk seen yesterday. I think I don't, not, uh, don't have to introduce Mark, he was uh, talking to you some minutes ago. And then we have Cesar Gomez from the Linux people, uh, Florian Mayer from the Munich distribution in Germany, it's called Linux. We have Holger Levsen, he is speaking for Debian Edu and Custom Debian distribution and Bidel tries to to so fill out the role of Debian here in, in this. The, no, it's, it's not really the end. I'm, I'm just extending the table a little bit. We are not really prepared for so many people. So I would like to you to have some short introduction of three or four minutes for each of you. Do we want, want to start? Mm -hmm. The mic is here. So uh, good morning. My name is uh, Martin Kraft, and I'm here to represent, as Andreas already said, vcs-pkg.org, which is a website that I put up in uh, the first half of this year. The goal of this website, and I hope I don't bore everyone if you've been to my talk yesterday, but let me just briefly give a one-minute summary of what it is all about. The goal of the website is to find out how we can work better together with other distributions or how we can work on a cross-distro level. I'm actually looking only on the technical side of things, so it's very much patch management oriented. But uh, because we are dealing with software and because we are dealing with packages and every one of us in the distros as well as in the derivatives are essentially doing the same task by maintaining packages, um, there's a lot of potential for, or there is a lot of overlap and there's a lot of potential for um, while making use of increased manpower. So uh, I'm, I'm very, very interested to um, cooperate with other distros. And obviously our derivers are going to be the easiest ones to cooperate with simply because the differences between what we do and what our derivers do are necessarily small. It is, after all, still a Debian-based system if it's derived from Debian. Um, I would like to make one more point, which is something that you, Mark, also mentioned earlier on in your talk, and that is that we should optimize for collaboration, and that, we, that in order to scale, we need to be able to support others that are trying to use our work and build, or I think you called it experiment, with our work. I think um, if I look back at the last four years of Debian and Ubuntu, the relationship, then one of the things that strikes me is that um, even though Debian always felt that we're being ripped off, that Ubuntu's bad, that stuff's going wrong, and that we're losing users and all that kind of stuff, um, I think the, re sorry, the reason why we haven't been able to cooperate are, of course, multifold. But one of the big causes is that Debian has been expecting Ubuntu and, by extension, every single one of its derivers to do this work, to do the, uh, the optimization for collaboration for Debian. So we weren't really able to, or willing, to step out and make it easy for our derivers to use and feedback, use our archive and feedback into our archive. And I hope that um, future discussions are going to prove fruitful so that we can support those that are building on our work. So that's what I'm trying to do on a technical level, and that's it for me. Great. I will just pass the microphone right on because I think I've been introduced today already. Hello, my name is Cesar Gomez, and I'm proud to be here representing the GNU Linux team of the Junta de Extremadura. Um, most of you know of us, but uh, for those who don't, uh, Extremadura is a region of Spain with one million inhabitants 
And ten year, more than 10 years ago, the regional government decided to start a new information society project. Um, that project was uh, um, meant to be, to be a good project in terms of having to, they wanted to, to have one computer for every two students. They wanted to build a business incubator and they wanted to build 50 telecenters known as uh, new knowledge centers there in Extremadura. And so what we need was a framework and a software that we could fully control and that is the reason we developed GNU Linux version. It is of course based in, uh, on Debian um, because we think that um, Debian has a strong community of good developers and because Debian doesn't rely on any company and that is important for us because we are not hiring the development of our own distro and we are developing it by our own. So, and I am also here because we are really, really interested in collaborating with other derivatives distros. And we, are, we have been doing so for the last uh, five years, and especially um, in the la during the last three years, we have been organizing uh, a lot of um, Debian work sessions there in Extremadura, and maybe Holger could, could tell you about the advance we have been doing between Debian Edu and GNU Linux. And so what we want to, to do is to, con to continue collaborating and to keep on going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Florian Meyer. I'm working for the city of Munich. Um, many of you have probably heard about the project. Um, I cut it off, it's 14,000 desktops. It's like um, many office objects like forms, macros, which have to be ported in some way. We ported them to open office um, and um, much business applications uh, which we have to emulate, uh, do things like uh, uh, we emware wine, QEMO. Um, and our motivations are quite similar to those of uh, Extremadura people, Linux, so um, we are pretty interested in collaboration. Um, I know personally that um, we haven't done that yet very much. We are opening patches, we are submitting patches, um, but um, I'm personally, as um, development lead, um, missing the direct communication channel, and um, so I was very interested in um, Martin's and um, Mark's talks, um, Martin's talk from the technical and uh, Mark's uh, talk from the social side of things, so maybe we can get, or I'm, I'm pretty sure we can get some inspiration at this StepConf and um, get things further and collaborate. Thanks. Um, my name is Holger Levsen. Um, I work on Debian Edu. Debian Edu was started in 2001 as a um, project in France to um, modif cost customize Debian for education. At the same time, people in Norway started School of Linux, which had the same aim. So in, within the next two or three years, the project, the two projects became one. So now we just, we have two names now. And since last year, the Linux people um, also um, merged I started merging their stuff into Debian Edu. The Linux people, the Linux is distributed in two forms. There's the, disti um, the distribution, um, which they have for uh, um, libraries and um, governmental use and for um, private use, and the Linux, which is used in school. At the moment, only the Linux in school is um, merging with Debian Edu. Debian Edu tries to work within De Debian. We try to get all our changes in Debian and try to um, prepare or help developers learn, learn the skills needed to maintain packages in Debian. Um, so we are kind of a, we try to be a kind of a different NM or DM process teaching people the skills needed. We have our own archive um, to make this possible. And that's it.
for intro. Hello, I'm BDL Garvey. Um, I think the reason Andreas asked me to join the panel is a combination of his desire to make sure that there was someone representing Debian itself, the main project that participated in this discussion, and also a recognition of the involvement that I've had over the years in helping to uh, foster this thought process that has led to some of the current ways that people interact uh, inside Debian and, and outside of Debian in creating uh, custom Debian uh, distributions and uh, the various downstream derivatives. Uh, if you go way back to uh, the platforms that I wrote uh, when I was running for DPL in 2001, 2002 and so forth, um, I was talking back then about um, how we could try to achieve this long-term vision of Debian as the universal operating system. And even in that time, it was very clear to me that the way this would happen was by presenting different subsets, different uh, combinations of packages, different flavors of Debian uh, in different contexts to different people with different needs. And uh, I'm very pleased over time that these ideas have been picked up and taken by other people and have helped lead to uh, some of these different uh, distributions that uh, the others on the panel have been talking about. I myself have been involved in creating some subsets of Debian and helping other people to uh, think about how to do that and to get started doing that in the corporate context. I mentioned in my talk yesterday morning uh, the fact that Debian is the distribution that's used inside uh, some products that come from HP. And in effect, the subsets of Debian that are part of those products are, uh, in some sense, custom Debian distributions. So this is a, a topic area I've been thinking about for a long time. I am not currently, personally, today, involved in any uh, creation or maintenance of derivatives. So. Uh, with that, I'll stop and we'll see what makes sense uh, from a discussion standpoint going forward. I think this, this might be. Um, I, I would like to speak also for the Debian Mate project. Um, the, the interesting thing in the Debian Mate project is that there was nothing for, uh, no free software for medical care in, in a um, form the, the, that medics really could use it. And so we, we, we are able to start it from, from sketch because there was nothing and we wouldn't be able to do so much work if there wouldn't be Debian. And so uh, we just learned that Debian is a thing which is amazingly adaptable to, to any, uh, at any task you want to do. And uh, we also learned that it's, it is a so-called duocracy, which means uh, um, those who do the job decide which job gets done. And um, this is a very good principle because if you can find somebody who is doing a certain job and he cares for this, then Debian is a really nice playground to realize your vision about things. And so we had the option to, to move this process very slowly forward. I wouldn't say that, that uh, this Debian made stuff is, is, is already a product. No, it, it isn't. But it's amazingly growing and it's has good chances to become a product. Um, it's in comparison to the Debian Edu um, um, people, they have much more developers and much more users because any school is, could potentially use it. So um, the, the effect of Debian Edu is much more visible and it's even more increased because of the uh, Linux people who try to merge and so you see the features which with are there if you work together. This is one very important point, work together and try to, to realize your, your dreams to, to support your specific users optimally. Because I think this uh, whole idea of custom Debian distributions is you have a special target user and this user needs some specific care of for, for, se for several reasons, I will elaborate about this in my next next talk. So, I wanted uh, not to go too much into this detail. Um, by the way, I'm I'm missing Thiago. Is he he, he so, uh, should it also be here on the round table? I just noticed now for the Debian Brazilian guys. Is he is he anywhere? I have him. So, <coughs> yeah, I hope he is prepared. I'm sorry. <laughs> Because I, I think it's it's very important uh, in Brazil the, the people are doing a, an amazing job, 
in um, bringing Debian to to uh, certain uh, well, Thiago can elaborate much more. And it's it's um, very important that we um, try to find ways how um, people in, in in countries could uh, propagate uh, um, the idea of Debian in in this country. But I know from. Uh, there is a country in Asia, um, Christian Perrier uh, was there, that is also applying Debian and we would like to know how can we as Debian make it even easier to, to uh, roll out Debian in, in large scales. So, um, are you able to give some, some words about Debian Brazil? I, I, I could, the, the mic is, is coming. Hi. Uh, no, you have a, a, a okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have a CDD project in Brazil mm -hmm. called BR Desktop, yeah. uh, and uh, we are trying to put the uh, the CDD in Lane. I don't know if it's going to be possible, uh, but uh, there's nothing really special. Uh, we just uh, I, we are working in Live Helper in order to get Live Helper working well with Debian installer and get the the, uh, the packages in the uh, lane. And uh, I would like to, to hear from you the, the, your experience. We have Debian Edu that uh, for a long time has been a, a great CDD. And uh, in Brazil, uh, we started it uh, as a CDD just for a um, few months. It's because uh, that I prefer stay here <laughs> just to hear you guys that has much have more experience in this subject. But if you mm -hmm. have any question, please be free mm -hmm. to ask me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, if anybody wants to comment on this, sorry, has I, I would like to add what I forgot in the Debian Edu introduction that Debian Edu is Debian except for 30 package we modified. So it. 30 packages we needed to uh, modify a bit to make them suit our needs. The rest is pure Debian, and the modifications are mostly um, configuration issues that we can um, pre-configure the, the installation so that teachers that it's, it's suited for a school. The network is um, set up, prepared, and it's easy to set up, and that's our changes. So it, we are mostly for 99, over 99.9 percent .9 Debian. So. What needed to be that we can use Debian even better is that in, for some packages a modification is possible without um, without changing conf files because they get overwritten on upgrades. But that's very few packages left. So Debian is really well suited for customization already. What I also would uh, like to say is um, if you try to make something else than Debian, you should keep in mind, or you should try to answer the question, what are the main three points that I'm, I'm missing in Debian? So, so, I'm missing in Debian this and this and this feature, and that's why I have to do a derivative from Debian. If there are not three main points, well, you should think about, make it, would it make sense to derive from Debian to because it is always work to make some difference to an existing system. So if, if you could elaborate on, on this one, I, I think for, for the Librex people, it might have been our government want a system which is ours. So this is one main point, is okay? Or are there other points or? Mm, at the beginning, it was uh, mostly the installer because um, we have uh, end users who do not know how to use uh, computers and they want to install Linux on, on their computers and it was really, really hard for them to install uh, Debian. So what we did was to use a different graphical installer, um, Anaconda, probably you'll know about it. But now with the uh, Debian graphical installer, we, we are trying to develop uh, the new release uh, based on the Debian graphical installer. But it also lacks of some features 
like a good uh, partitioning tool and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And that is mm, probably the, the, the main reason we do not use Debian itself. Mm -hmm. So you you found you found the reasons and then uh, I remember this uh, this installer problem was was also for for Debian Edu and I think the the basic work of the Debian installer was done by the Skull Linux Debian Edu uh, people in in the when it when it switched from Debian CD to Debian installer is this correct Holger? Not sure. Not sure. I I remember Joey has some or whatever who he was. Um, Yeah, I, I'm afraid I'm more or less the only representative of the of the DI team around. So <laughs> let's answer or try to answer. Yes, uh, the answer is yes. The, mm -hmm. mo the the very initial work of DI was done mostly by Joey. Yes, but mm -hmm. the Scully Linux uh, people and particularly uh, Peter Reynolds and mm -hmm. worked a lot. Tolef also. So yes, this is something where we can reward to uh, Scully Linux and Debian Edu. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a good example of a mm -hmm. give back by yeah. a derived distribution, yes. So the idea was, I'm missing something in Debian and so I'm just doing inside Debian this, w what is missing? So Debian had the profit, uh, the profit and the project as well. So this, this is the idea and I think this is the same with the Linux people, they, they learned that they need something and just did it on their own because Debian was not quick enough. It is, I think this is the main problem, that Debian is a, is, is a large thing and um, um, in, in German I have read the word Ehrenwürdig. I don't know the translation what it means, but uh, um, you know what was? Honorable. The honorable. So it, it means it, it is a huge beast and it is uh, hard to move it. But it's not uh, actually true, I think. You, you can move it, and if you will not move it in, in the current release, you can do it in the next release. And uh, we have seen that, and this, this makes a, the success of Linux that they try to adapt much closely. So I, um, I have two questions specifically to the derivers. Um, I guess I give them both, but they both uh, require discussion afterwards. The first one is I didn't know that Debian Edu is Debian with 30 packages modified. And when I heard that, I immediately had to think, why are those modifications not possible to do inside Debian so that I could actually um, Back number. I could actually make the change in some sort of like higher level policy file. Like I understand that this is not currently possible or that there are some conflicting changes and that you possibly can't answer them with depconf, but um, it seems to me that there, this is some sort of like flavor question. Like it's a, a group of decisions that have to be made together and then suddenly the system becomes a Debian edu system. But I believe uh, Steve is very keen on saying something to this. So uh, would you would you like to? So I'm, I'm, is on? Okay. So I'm grinning and laughing at Holger when, uh, when this question comes up because he and I have had many conversations about some of the changes that Debian Edu has to make currently because, yeah, the packages are not in a position where the changes can be made in a policy compliant way within Debian. So Debian being the purest, the technical excellence above all, interferes with certain practical goals of being able to ship a system that does what they want. And you know, over time we are moving towards ad addressing, sorry, very vague. So concretely we have things like open LDAP is one particular package where there is no way for plugging in and, and the default configurations that we are, we are shipping for the open LDAP package in Debian do not accommodate everything that Debian Edu wants to, to do out of the box as an LDAP server, as a directory server. Um, and we've been trying gradually over over years to converge on something that, that meets their needs uh, in a policy compliant way within Debian. And it's a long process because it's they're hard technical problems to, to solve this for everyone. And you didn't exactly want to wait three years for us to get that done before you were able to start deploying and therefore you did the sensible thing and you modified the system on your own. Experiment. 
what what Steve just said is one one reason which what the problem is. The other problem is the freeze. <laughs> um, that Debian Edo has fewer developers, so we can only start to deploy our modifications and test them properly when Debian is frozen, but then we ca cannot get our changes in anymore. So there were many of the changes we had were just small um, minor bug fixes, which the release team doesn't want to have in stable when, when, when um, testing is frozen. So that's why we have a get it at the moment, or two weeks ago we had three, two packages different from Debian, we were pure Debian, and by now we have I have not counted probably 10 packages different. And this, I will try to talk about this more today at three in my Debian Edu talk about the problems in becoming main, really. So for me, the most important thing there is that there's clearly a very strong commitment to get those changes in to Debian. And the, the way you articulated it and the way you, you know, I mean, there's no doubt in anybody's mind that there's an intent to get that. And I think it's valuable to respect that, you know, even when people have that intent, Sometimes it is necessary to make the, to, 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 to have modified packages and there, there shouldn't be a social stigma attached to that as long as the, the intent is there to, to, to drive things in a positive direction. I don't think it's a social stigma, it's a technical problem. We, we, we have problems but when upgrading we need to maintain the changes, that's, that's why I want to change it really. But I think, you know, in, in my conversations with customers and people that I work with and, and other companies and, and other projects, it's always clear that what everyone wants to do is to focus on those small pieces of the development work that will help them achieve their specific goals and to help them uh, in a commercial and business sense differentiate themselves from all the other people out there that they may be competing with. And it's this, this notion in Debian that we do have a common place to come together, uh, to collaborate and work together on all of those pieces that don't differentiate us from each other and aren't unique to solving our specific uh, problems and our specific needs that makes this whole community thing so incredibly powerful. And as long as we all sort of understand that and are trying to feed things back and are willing to tackle the, the problems of you know, packages that don't provide the elements of configurability required to, to meet some specific set of needs, then I think this is all very healthy and we end up with an overall ecosystem that's a good thing. The challenge comes when, when for some reason or another, someone, some specific developer or some sub-team within the project um, gets really unhappy about the direction that's being taken by a particular derivative and then we end up with, you know, conflicts or antagonism that at the end of the day, it doesn't really help anybody. So I, the question for the technical reasons of why we're not being able to work closer together, um, I think that's something that I would personally like to see addressed. And maybe we can figure out what the, sort of even on a higher level, not on a per package level, but on a higher policy level, like what, what is keeping us from having a package that can actually serve multiple use cases? I'm uh, at the University of Limerick in Ireland, and one of our software research groups, they uh, look at what's called software product lines. And as part of, while well, talking to these guys, I came across a study that was very, very interesting, groundbreaking. Um, I'm sure you guys all know uh, on, on television sometimes they have uh, commercials where they try to sell you games you can play on your cell phones, right? So uh, if you like this game, press one. If you like this game, press two. If you like this game and so on. Each one of them is five euros. Um, what I found very, very interesting is that from this study or in this study, they, they looked at these games and they found that most of these games are exactly the same game. It's one and the same code base. It is a feature file that you add to that or which you merge with it, and then suddenly, instead of having little green blobs run around the screen vertically, you now have red squares that do the th same thing horizontally. New game, new title, done, sold, more money. Um, and this very much looks, well, the, the software product lines people actually approached me because they are very, very interested in Debian. Debian being a system that has a rigorous quality assurance level for the metadata that we provide in the in our um, archive so that we can do our dependency resolution and also um, the cleanliness that our policy ensures on the file system level. Um, 
it seems to me that this is actually a perfect basis for something like software product lines. Is there a layer at which we can plug into the system where we can make higher level choices so that you know you can easily turn a Debian system into a completely different system just by specifying those few changes that have to be made? I wonder how maybe maybe a panel member has an idea of what to do there, what the technical requirements for that would be. Assuming that we don't have to, you know, we have our policy right now and we have Debian as it is right now, but that doesn't mean that we have to have that same thing in five years from now. So yes, where can we go? I, th I think this is actually the, the thing Debian Edu people are doing. They are just wanting to, to, to put a different uh, option to the installation CD and then it installs Debian Edu. And this is the, the, the final goal if I'm not completely misled. And so they, they are... Um, Constantly um, trying to to get the, the diff between Debian and what was Debian Edu very small, and if I understand you right, Florian, this is in principle the same idea in, in Munich. Um, yes, yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, we've got some some more changes at the moment, but uh, of course we we want to minimize that. Um, we've got uh, we've had some dependencies in in the past simply to um, open Office because um, um, our serial letter system, um, the Volmux, um, you probably heard about that or perhaps not. Um, it's uh, free software since two months, I think. Um, and it just does work only with the Sun uh, Java virtual environment. So um, we had to use um, upstream open office self-compiled. So that's one point. The other point, um, I don't see um, a way out is um, new kernel for new hardware. We, we have to uh, build our own kernels and um, that's a very tough point because um, we've, we've got several departments and all of them are waiting. If we say you gotta migrate now and they say okay now I buy new hardware. Fine. <laughs> Works great. Um, so this is one point where, where I don't have a solution in mind but in principle you're right. Absolutely. So my conclu conclu conclusion would be that Debian is, is not flexible enough to, to, to solve these hardware problems and so on. We, we, I, I think it is a task for Debian to, to try to, to get this settled somehow, but I think there are uh, some, some chances uh, we have. And Peter, do you want, want to elaborate on this topic? Or? Well, it's actually Peter Reinholdsen has been commenting on IRC. I, I don't know how socially appropriate it is to be watching IRC <laughs> while sitting on a panel. But um, <clears throat> he, he points out that it is actually possible to install an older version of Debian mm -hmm. Edu using the normal Debian CDs, but that uh, you know, there's the, the package lag situation in the Lenny mm -hmm. archive right now is what keeps the, the current version from being installable. So it's interesting, in lots of the conversations that I've had with the Debian Edu folks and with other people, sometimes the, the issue really comes down to how we're going to structure the configurability of the package and whether there are in fact um, sort of large uh, level configuration things that have to be decided at, at package build time um, that you know force decisions in one way or another. Um, sometimes those are solvable by being willing to have alternate versions of the package built in the archive that you know work in different ways. Uh, this could be as simple as things like uh, the sudo versus sudo LDAP versions, uh, which was originally done because some people really wanted sudo to work well with LDAP and some people didn't want to bring in the huge pile of library dependencies that the LDAP inclusion uh, forces on sudo. So you know, there, there are things like that that we can do. Um, I think Petter in particular has done a lot of work over the years in, in how we should layer configuration file changes and make it possible for uh, people in different levels of the distribution uh, and uh, derivation stream to be able to overlay different configuration information. Uh, this is a topic that I'm confident could continue to uh, be worked on over time to the benefit of everybody on some of these packages. I don't know, Holger, if you have any particular thoughts about things that right now are challenging to configure that maybe we should work harder on? Well, we have our bug 3118888. Um, no, that's the wrong number, but um, whatever. This is the, the bug which blocks the upgrade for certain packages in Debian Edu. Um, those are our most pressing issues. Um, the 
debuggers you are about, you should not modify configuration files. Yeah. yeah. And it's against Debian Edu config, and there are three bugs against Debian Edu config, so it's easy to find. Um, the other thing, what Florian said, that it's hard to deploy newer, newer hardware. Um, we all know this. This is a problem in Debian. Debian has the same. And this, this year, for the first time, we tried to address it with Edge and a half, which I think was a good experiment. Took too long in the end, but it was still there, and we have, we have started to establish processes for doing so. And I'm I'm quite positive that it will become, will be better for Lenny and a half. I, I think that will be done, and I think that will be done faster. So I, th I hope this will be, will be addressed better. Um, the other ch change, you, you spoke about changes in Debian, which we uh, could do to make um, derivatives' lives easier, would be at the moment um, um, Debian is frozen, but there are, there are some packages where the freeze is not really so much in my point of view, which is mostly the Debian installer. But that, that, um, it's differently frozen. It's also frozen, but it's, it's different. And I think it would be good for other insta installer packages um, to also have a different freeze guidelines. Um, like what I said, Debian Edu mostly needs to modify three packages, Debian Edu, Debian Edu config, and Debian Edu install, um, so that we can tailor Debian to our needs. And if those three packages were excluded from the freeze, it would make our life much easier, and we could, we could probably release within Debian. And the same is true for Debian Mate, probably for other custom Debian distribution. It's also true for Phi, this fully automatic installation thing, which is also just takes Debian and um, is an installation tool. So I think if I'm, I'm started to think how policy needs could could be changed so that we can get this possible. That's a very interesting idea. So the, the thought then is that because those packages only really affect that particular derivative and are not things that other things within the archive depend on, that maybe they could freeze later in the process or much closer to the release time in the same way that I was, Sledge was talking yesterday, I guess, about the situation with Debian CD almost always has to be one of the last packages into the archive because, uh, you know, you, you, you can't really sort of do everything right with it until everything else is frozen and ready to go. And I know in the past, release notes have been some of the last things into the archive. And I talked them into taking a Debian history package update once very late. It is, after all, just text. Um, and so this is a very interesting idea, and I think it's something that we could have a useful conversation with the release team about. Are there any release team folks in the room that would like to comment about that one way or the other? <laughs> They're all hiding off doing release things. <laughs> so um, I have also a question um, to Mark, because in, in my opinion, I was asking for, for three reasons to derive. I, in, in my opinion, it is um, Ubuntu does a very good job in branding Debian. I know it from, from my institute. Um, well, the story is a little bit longer. We, 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 we should use uh, free software, but effectively there is no use, except for my private box there. And uh, I told them, well, I don't care about the Linux distribution you choose. Uh, choose uh, this distribution. Uh, which your next friend is using, and I'm the only friend in, in the institute, and so my advice was, I would be able to help you with, with Debian perfectly, and they decided, no, we are using uh, Zuzi because there's a, a large company behind Zuzi. So branding Debian is, 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 is a very important thing, in my opinion. Uh, then you told me us you are doing experiments and whatever. It's, it's interesting. It was a new point for me, and what's Missing in the Debian for you? What's what's is there any third point you are missing in Debian? What makes a reason to build Ubuntu? Okay, so I, I, you made a couple of interesting points there, and then I'll come to the things mm -hmm. that that really inspired us mm -hmm. to 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 create a der derivative. Um, so I, I think your your point of cho choosing choosing the thing that your friends use is very sensible because yeah. you're going to get yeah, much sure. better much better yeah. support from your friends than yeah, from sure. a a phone number I don't care about some, somewhere else. So I, I would agree with your, uh, your way of thinking there. Um, for us, the number one thing was the, the focus on the desktop mm -hmm. and, the, and the commitment to a release cycle and the ability to provide commercial support. So, you know, I'm contradicting mm -hmm. myself there. Yeah, said what that I mean with branding. So branding, branding and commercial uh, 
report is. is yeah, I think, I think to really deliver the benefits to a specific audience, to a certain audience, in order, if, we, if we want to really deliver the, the, the benefits of free software to them, then we need to figure out how to bring those things together. And I, I felt it would take a, a dedicated effort just to do that. And, and when you look at what we've done, we've really tried, tried to do that. We've tried to figure out how you, how you bring the benefits of free software, which are the ability to modify it. You know, you know, what, you, you know what those are, the, the, this extraordinary long tail of, of innovation that you have access to and all of the communities behind that innovation. To bring those benefits to the sorts of audiences that I really care about, um, I thought it would take a dedicated effort that could that could make commitments about release cycles and could provide commercial you know commercial guarantees and support mm -hmm. and it's still unproven that we can actually achieve everything that, that that we want to achieve but I think I think we've made good steps in that in that direction um, so our goals it was not a, it was not so much a technical constraint um, mm. it's not you know I, it's not that I felt that we needed to r radically change Debian, which is why I'm quite comfortable with the idea that you know we constantly merge because we don't want to go off in a different direction. It was more it was more the sort of social structure, social and commercial structure around it that I thought would be necessary to bring free software, free of charge, to a consumer audience. Mm -hmm. uh, the question because you uh, told me desktop and because also Florian um, uh, told about this Java issue, I, I also face a problem that Java is um, well, not so good support in Debian as, as it should be because uh, do you think this is a problem? We have many applications that just not work because it's so complicated with this Java stuff. Uh, I, I think that is changing and it's mm. changing for a couple of reasons. One has been that Sun's work on the license mm. is, is, is bearing fruit now. We really are at the point I think where you can expect to see a certifiable Java mm. installation that's that's um, that's uh, that previous free software. Um, and the second thing is, you know, w we have engaged with Sun. When I say we, I mean Canonical has actually engaged with Sun. And, and Sun is receptive to the idea that it's actually worth really packaging um, Java in a way that really makes sense mm. to, you know, from a Debian perspective. So, so we really want to try and create the sense of having something which is a true Java experience in every sense. Mm -hmm. But it's also a true Debian experience that when you, when you want to get this piece, it pulls in that piece, the Java pieces that you need, the only, only the pieces that you need and puts them in the right sorts of places. And my sense is that Sun is now actually really quite receptive to that and wants that. And so do, Matthias, where's Ma Matthias? Matthias has been working closely with the Sun guys and I believe collaborating with Debian Java guys as well. And the intent is that we will actually have you know, a, a TCK certifiable stack in Debian in Ubuntu. Um, certainly, I imagine it, it would make it for Lenny. It should certainly make the next Ubuntu release. And my um, always, if I had some some Java application, it's uh, it, it was somehow a failure. It doesn't work, and so it's somehow frustrating. And it, it would be really great if he could get some some closer relation to to Sun to to, to work on Debian and so on. So there's a man. Okay. Ah, this is great. <laughs> Do you want to uh, care to elaborate here on in this? Let me uh, Doka knows the technical details, but what this is one of the things that that I work on at Sun is trying to get our software package for Linux distributions and the and the ones that we've identified are the top four are Debian, um, Ubuntu, OpenSUSE, and Fedora. And so we've been working very closely. Uh, Doka has been a great help with this, mm -hmm. um, and also we have a person who we've, we've recently hired, Dalibor Topic from the Class Path uh, project. Some of you may know him. <clears throat> who's been been working on this as well? But we're we will be in. Um, we just got into Maine for Intrepid, and uh, looks like we're we're almost in Lenny. I think you just have to upload something. Um, we were uh, Doka was talking with Mark Heimers and and the group yesterday about this, and so it looks like we're going to make it in. But that's something that's very important for us. And then <clears throat> on top of that, we would, we'll start with OpenJDK, and then we would like to get things like NetBeans. Um, and so one of the things I'd like to talk with Daniel Bauman, because I think he's the person in Debian who's, who's been working on NetBeans, but there's other Java-based um, things like our, as I said, NetBeans, Glassfish, our app server, and things like that. So yeah, if there's anything that you want to know about that, please, I'm Barton George, you can, I'm around, so you can grab me. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we definitely see the value of getting Java into to Debian and want to get it in there as, as um, 
as quickly and as, and as robustly as we can. That would be really, really great. So I, I've seen we have 10 minutes left. Um, is, are there any questions from, from the audience? So to make not only a table discussion, but perhaps there are some further questions. If, if not, I would like to, to uh, come back to, the oh yes, uh, our DPL wants, wants to join. Hi, just out of curiosity, how many people do you have working on each year project? So I'm answering for myself. I'm, uh, by the way, I'm elaborating on this on the, in this afternoon for, for, for other CDDs and I think we have three to five very active people and about 15 people who are providing some very uh, good work. So it is a very small project for my case. Debian Edo, it's more like five to ten people working on it. We have more translators, um, but the, the core developer team is really small at the moment. Uh, in the Linux project, it's at the moment four people working in the development team. It's in ITIL terms spoken, one change manager which uh, who isn't developing, it's one virtualization guy who is sitting in the back of this room, <laughs> <laughs> just right behind you, and uh, two developers including me, um, but we're getting additional aid until January next year, so hopefully this will get better. We are currently five main developers and we also have uh, some more people working on documents and also some of the teachers of the schools in Extremadura do some nice work and report it to, to, to us. And so we can be like, I don't know, 20 people and maybe 10, 12 teachers. Um, depend, depending on how you measure it, we span from about a hundred and something developers uh, who work on Ubuntu, active on Ubuntu, um, up to 20 some thousand people who've contributed translations to varying degrees of, of dedication or quality. And uh, we're, I think we're very particularly strong in things like um, documentation, the wiki, um, the forums and communities around that. So. That gives you some sense of the shape of, shape of the community. When considering that VCS package is rather young and a lot of it is discussion, I guess the number of developers in VCS package is the number of people that take part in our discussions and then I would have to say maybe around a dozen. Um, but we do span four distributions at the moment so um, unfortunately Debian is definitely overpresented. So if you know anyone that uh, is from other distributions and interested in this then uh, you know, make him join. <laughs> Steve would make them all Debian people if they were from other distributions. I've, uh, yeah, I've gotten off that, but yeah. Perhaps you have the wrong audience to ask for, for other distributions in this. And that's from an Ubuntu guy, Mark says. <laughs> yeah, so, any other questions? Uh, okay. As I told in the beginning, so my main point, main point was to try to, to um, specify the problems you have with Debian, but why do you have something else and why do we are doing um, uh, a derivative for not also, um, I also told the, the people from Debian Brazil, just try to find out what's, what could, could be changed in Debian to make it, make the diff very, very small or just be Debian like um, Debian Edu people want to do, and because it's it's just makes more sense to 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 save the work for different people. This is, uh, this is my definite experience after six years in, in Debian Mate. We we wouldn't be able to do anything without Debian. We, we this project would have died so after one or two years if it not would be on the on the back of Debian, which is a, a great community and really helpful to, to keep a good idea alive and if I, I think if, if you have some comments in the end then we could do so and then we finish we have 
four minutes left, I think. Well, I just want to, hello, just want to make a quick comment and uh, returning to the technical stuff from earlier. Um, maybe the derivatives and specifically Holger, because we talked about Debian Edu earlier, but this applies to every other derivative, could try to think about what sort of, cla what are the classes of modifications that have to be made to the packages. And maybe we can come up with a, with a way that we can formalize those changes, that those changes can be done um, easily in the package. And I'm specifically thinking of another distribution in the Linux market that has flags, which you can set um, during compilation, the Gen2 use flags. Um, those basically are standardized across all the packages. And if you want Postgres support, then simply you pass that flag onto the compilation of all the packages. Um, maybe we can find a way in which we can um, specify an interface at this level of packaging, which the derivatives can use to simply create derived distributions, distributions for other goals, without actually having to go and and spend three years getting DebCon questions into this package and spend two years trying to figure out how to make this package modifiable. Lift it up one layer and try to find the solution up there. Maybe it's possible. Yeah, from my side, two, two primary, primary things that I'd really like to see. One is more adoption of packaging frameworks or systems that encourage split out packages, uh, patches, sorry, and it doesn't really matter which system. Anything which explicitly says, hey, here's the set of changes that we've made in the process of packaging this um, uh, is enormously beneficial in terms of relationships with upstream. It makes it so much easier for them to see what you're doing and why you're trying to do it. It's enormously beneficial in terms of in terms of uh, derivatives because it creates a natural place where you can say, well, here's the additional work that we think is valuable. And, uh, and, and we see, for example, in all of the automated tools that we have, where we're working with a package which, which automatically splits that out, which, which, where the, the package structure is a split out structure, we, the, 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 the feedback that we can give to DDs or to the corresponding DDs is just that much clearer because you know, it's, just, it's logically laid out. So that would be the, the, the technical change that I'd like to see is more adoption of packaging with split out patches. And the social thing would be, you know, a, 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 a positive engagement, a sense that, you know, that, 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 that it's a really great thing for Debian, that we bring more and more people in, even if they are pursuing things that are, you know, specialist, potentially specialist agendas. Regarding the social and communication issues, I think that um, developer gatherings are really, really important to improve uh, Debian. Thanks for um, extra Maduro for doing this. You're welcome. <laughs> And thank you. for example, the Debian installer uh, team was there in 2006, and they really, really improved the graphical installer, and that's the reason why the new version of Debian will be and we'll have a, a good graphical installer, and that is also good for us. So I think that developer gatherings are really, really important to get rid of the social and communication issues. Yes, I, I also think that um, just uh, meeting and, and, and talking and, and in, either in real life or uh, in cyberspace somewhere is very important for us, um, for us derivates to stay in contact with uh, the community um, get our changes back or um, get get new things into Debian. Um, I think first first step forward was the bug splashing party we did uh, two years ago in Munich. I'd love to see that again and um, we'll be trying to get um, new developers or at least maintainers going from Munich for Debian to give something back. We're just starting so if you want to sign my key just go, go, uh, get back to me. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Martin spoke about a, um, uni a standardized way to configure packages. And as there is nothing at the moment, there's w Debian Edu puts a lot of configuration into LDAP, which is useful for mm -hmm. the services we deploy, but it's new not useful for desktop applications. So there is nothing. Um, there's from OpenWT started developing UCI, Universal Config Interface or something, which they want to plug into every package. Some, I'm not, I haven't really looked at it, but the, the idea to provide a 
meta level of configuration which many packages um, can use is useful, but it has not been really developed except this UCI thing, which I would suggest people to look at if they are interested in that. Olga, there is, uh, there is an outline support for a <coughs> enhancement to dpackage that would give us variant um, support within the actual package building itself, and you would be able to, to leverage the full power of dev build options and other standards like that to actually apply those at the build stage so you could be able to either have a slightly different deep build package or to apply a different configuration to, uh, to, to generate a, uh, a spin-off package for yourself. But it's, at the moment, it's just a bug report against deep package, but it is something that MDebian would like to actually implement across the board to provide these kinds of extra layers of configurability on the existing package, not necessarily to have to rebuild it, but to actually uh, allow it to be built in a um, a customized manner. That, that sounds very interesting and something I think that it would be great for us to have some other conversation about. Uh, we're getting the hook though, we are out of time. I would just like to close by saying that um, I'm incredibly pleased and just sort of amazed that in the time since we first began talking about flavors of Debian and how the project should interact with uh, derivatives and so forth many years ago, that we've now gotten to the point where so many people are so successfully creating custom Debian distributions and derivatives and that they're able to do this with so few people. It's a real testament to all of the work that's been done over the years by the huge number of people who've contributed to the Debian project. And I think we should all remember that and think about sort of you know, how proud we can be that, that other people are able to take what we've done and go extend it and customize it to meet specific needs as easily as they can. And uh, remember that when they come and ask us to make something a little bit different, uh, maybe make a change that will enable them to do something else, that this is a good thing and we ought to figure out how to make uh, Debian an even more uh, universal and useful base for people to do things with in the future. Andres? Oh, thanks, thanks for joining the table. We have to finish here. The time is left over for a couple of minutes. So the next speaker is waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much.